Hey guys, this is Mel of RTC1. I'm going to be doing the Silent Ruins Exploration Event, Decaying City 5, Helicoid Hallway number 8, and Forgotten Metropolis number 5. So let's start off down here. I'm going to be, oops, I'm going to be doing my night today. And I'm going to be unlocking the roots and showing what prizes you get from doing these little side paths. I think they might be summon tickets, they might be something worse, might be something better. We'll find out together. I'll just grab a friend. We'll be on our way. I'm really trying to hope for a friend that has wall or regen too, because I want to get those somebody to follow one of those until they come out for everyone. I'm not gonna try to uh, spend magicite to get to risk my RNG on something that will just come out later, right? So. Best of luck if you're trying to go for either of those, or or even the Doom Train one, which I don't think is really worth it at this time, but definitely Wall and Region are great to have. <clears throat> Currently, um, just getting ready to go to bed right after this, uh, work overnight shift, so I've got to sleep during the day, but yeah, it's, uh, it's fine. It's all good. Uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about also... Um, Free-to-play games and, and the risk factor. I've been playing a lot of free-to-play games a lot of my life, especially since they kind of rolled out on the mobile market. That's where I kind of have dived a lot of money into, is free-to-play games. They're not necessarily free-to-play if you want to advance, right? Or be in the upper rankings. And sometimes you fall in a hole. And sometimes that hole only deepens because other people are diving in as much money, if not more. And they base their market and what they come out with in content and value on how much people put into the game. Which makes it really hard and becomes a pay-to-win game more than just a pay-to-play. Or even just a free-to-play for most people free-to-play for those people who are just playing free-to-play and don't have the money for it are really stuck in a rut sometimes and aren't able to advance. <coughs> for most games, I hope that never affects the storyline, but sometimes it does. There are games like Brave Exodus, which are fantastic games, and this one as well, where the story will progress and hopefully free-to-play players can get to the farthest storyline progressions just by playing the game and not without having to pay any money for it. Now, if you want to be the upper in the rankings, you want to have the best cards, the best jobs, you want to try all the jobs, obviously that's going to take some money. But if you're just wanting to, I'm going to get whatever first job summon I have or whatever two job summons come my way from free magicite and whatever cards come my way from events and stuff like that, you're going to be able to play through the game just at a much slower rate, and hopefully that doesn't change in time and make sure it so you have to drop money in order to progress in the storyline because that is unfair, I believe, for players. And I've played games like that and where you're kind of stuck to either pay or you just stop playing altogether because you can't even progress in a single-player mode, which is really sad but then there are games that are fully revolved around competitive pay to win. And those games, I believe, are fun at first, but they drop appeal very quickly. And so if a game that is free to play becomes a pay to win game, it loses appeal really fast and is a risk tracker for all the people that have dumped money into it. I'd like to talk a little bit about one of those games. It's one of my favorites back in the day. Defenders of Texel, or Defender of Texel, D.O.T. It was by Mobage. Now, Mobage was a is a, is still a huge company with a lot of uh, mobile games, and most of those mobile games revolve around transactions. There's no way out of it when you're playing a Mobage game. Let's see what price is. Right here, we got two crystals from that. Not too bad. Does this path go off anywhere else? It doesn't look that way. I'm gonna, I'm going to. Teleport right over here. Now, Mobage is is a company that's still around, but a lot of their games, because they do the pay-to-win factor, it and it runs heavily in their games, and not just pay-to-play or free-to-play. Um, 
Defender of Texel was one of was a warning to those people who do the pay to win and expect the game to go on for a long time because if they're dumping thousands of dollars into the game and nobody wants to reach that same point because they either aren't wealthy enough or they're not willing to risk debt or they just don't want to spend the money on it then those people who are dumping thousands of dollars to be on top are going to be left empty handed in the end when the game can only run on a few people paying and then those people are, are paying less and less and less because they're already ahead and nobody wants to play the game anymore and then the game just gets taken off the market. Um, that's what happened to DOT. It was it was for a long time really huge, but more and more there were a select few people that would spend thousands of dollars in the game to be the top ranks, and nobody that was free to play, and nobody that was even just a hardcore player that played all the time and, and dumped very little money into it were ever able to progress or get ahead. And so those people that were spending the, the lower amounts of money just stopped playing altogether because the prizes were only benefiting those who paid the thousands of dollars. There was no prize for any runners up. There was, the, the prizes were literally within the top 100 spots and that was a 4 million download game. So to get into those top like 100 spots or 1,000 spots, it, it would take a ton of money to get there. Now, what I like about Mobius Final Fantasy is that there are prizes and there are gifts for everyone, no matter what your play skill or your level is. And the prizes from 30,000 um, plus all the way to 1 through 500 or whatever I believe the top ranking is are very close in value. So nobody has to feel like they have to spend thousands of dollars to be the number one because you can just play a lot and and be just as good as somebody who spends a lot of money on it. And there is very balanced, and I hope it stays that way for a while. I haven't played too much of the JP, so I don't know how balanced it is there, and I can't really understand the language, and so I just base it off of my global understanding so far. And I hope this game and others like it don't turn into a play to win, because that is very unfun for everyone. Even though I spend money on the game, I, I also believe that it is not fun for others as well as myself. There is a time, though, where my pay to play will not go into pay to win. I only pay to play because I want to set up a new job class, so I want to make videos for you guys. I want to do those things because that's something um, I've, I've chosen to do out of more media um, to bring forth, stuff like that. If it comes down to whether I get the 30,000 spot um, globally or the 500th spot and the prizes are so close in value that it doesn't really matter, oh, we got a summon ticket from that one, then, then of course I'm going to choose the latter, which is, which is not, not spend the money. Let's move on to the helicoid hallway. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just still getting over my cough, so you hear me coughing a lot. And talking about Mobage again, um, Defenders of Texel isn't their only game that, that it's happened to. They have others as well. Now, there's also games <clears throat> where it's pay-to-play, but the pay-to-play is much too high. And there are games like that where you spend as much time as you want on the game, but you're never going to unlock everything. And people would rather spend the time and the money on a game that they spend $60 for a full game. Um, that they can get for a console or for PC, and get everything in the in the in the, in the value of one single singular item. And that DLC, if it comes, is very minute and not necessary. But there are games by EA that um, fall into the pay-to-play, and it's and that's all the game is. There is really there's really very little for a free-to-play person. One of those games is Sims Social, and also Sim City Social, uh, Sim City Social Life, or whatever it's called. Those were Facebook games. Now they were popular for a while, but what fell into their habit was making every single little item cost a dollar, cost two dollars, cost tons of money, and people were just like, ah, I don't want to be bothered by it. And they would bug their friends if they wanted to get the notification wise. 
and people turned off their notifications to the game because that's all that it came down to. And after after a while, I I, I played very little because my sister was into it and she invited me and she wanted free items, so so I did that for her. But not everybody was willing to do that for the people that played it. And so that game fell off really quickly, along with The Sims City. So if a game becomes pay to play and only pay to play and less free to play, it loses the appeal as well. So those are both examples of risk factors when you're going into a free to play game <clears throat> and expecting the game to stay free to play or expecting the game to not fall out if nobody spends money on it. The servers have to run. They have to pay the, the, the employees, but not everyone who is playing a free to play game is ever going to spend money, which is understandable. So, those people who do spend money, I would also warn and encourage you to to be be someone who is also wise with their money. You can spend money as much as you want, obviously, but the more you spend, the higher the RNG um, percentage drop rate wise things will be in the future because they'll look at those statistics and be like people are willing to spend a thousand dollars on this one item let's make the next item need a two thousand dollar percentage drop rate to get one so hold on a second so, excuse me whoo sneeze right there so the more you spend and the more you pay the higher that, or the lower that percentage is going to be for the items that you want. So just be wise about that. The more people that do that, and and only pay a very minimal amount, they'll make it more likely that you're going to be able to get the items you want with less money in the future. Let's see where we're going, or what the item is. <coughs> Another crystal. That's great. Oh, and it still goes onwards. Helicoid hallway, hallway number nine. Okay, well, I'll stop right here, and the next time it looks like there's going to be a big area or big video, I will post that as well. This has been Malvar TC1. I hope you liked what I was talking about. Just be careful out there. Spend money, but if you want, but don't spend overly amounts of it because they'll give away the items later on. And I hope you like and subscribe. Thanks.